What's up guys and welcome back. Today I'm revealing 15 real estate side hustles that you can do part time. Not only are these jobs in super high demand, they also pay pretty well and I'm going to show you how to use these side hustles as a way to get your foot in the door and become a full time real estate investor yourself. And as a cherry on top, we're touring some of my active job sites so you can see what these side hustles would be responsible for at a real property. Let's get after it. What's up guys, my name is Lily, and if you're new here, welcome to the channel. This is where I document my real estate investing journey and literally bring you along with me. Now, I've seen a ton of side hustle videos and usually they're filmed from behind a desk and it's a bit hard to understand what you would actually be doing if you did that side hustle. So in today's video, we're gonna walk around a couple of my properties and I'm gonna show you exactly what you would be responsible for if you were working with an investor to do some of these jobs. I'm also gonna tell you how easy it is to get started doing that side hustle, how much money you could make, and what type of time commitment you might need. This video is gonna be super hot fire. So if you're also not a rapper, but ready to be a real estate investing side hustler, change the color of the like button. Let's go check out this property. So one thing I do as an investor is break any big rehab projects like this up into three phases. So at the start of phase one, I'll have all of my estimates for phase one and all of my contractors hired. Then as we're approaching phase two, I'll get the estimates and hire the contractors for that. And the same thing for phase three. The reason that I do it this way is because it would be really hard as changes are made to get estimates for the entire project at once. So we've got this huge bathroom shower slash tub situation happening here and it would have been really hard to get an estimate from my tile guy before this area even existed. And so as you can tell, we're now at the end of the drywall phase. There's actually only one more day of drywall work to be done which means that this is the end of phase two and it's about time to start getting the estimates and hiring the contractors for phase three. This is where you come in as the side hustler. If I had someone to collect all of those estimates for me, get all the estimates from my three tile guys, get all the estimates from my three painters and whatever else is left in here for phase three and then present them to me at once, that would be a really valuable service. I could walk around the property one time with my estimator and show them exactly what needed for phase three, give them the document that outlines everything, and then they could show up when the contractors were able to schedule a bid, open the door and walk through with the contractors. Of course, if they had any questions, they could call me and ask, but for the most part, this would save me time and energy showing the property to multiple contractors and repeating what the job entails over and over again. Now, if you're also bilingual in English and Spanish, you would be extra valuable because a lot of times I'm in a part of the country where my workers speak Spanish and because I don't, that's a big barrier. So if you're bilingual, that could also be a bonus and you could charge even a little bit more. How would you find an opportunity like this and how much could you get paid? For any of the side hustles in this video, the keyword's going to be hustle. So if you're willing to put in a little bit of work, it's not that hard to find an investor like me who could use your help. One one recommendation I have is to go into your local Facebook investing groups, go to Craigslist, go to Instagram DMs, and as a bonus, go to the hardware store right when they open. Whenever I'm in need of a new electrician or a new plumber, I just go to that aisle in the hardware store first thing when they open and ask people if they are contractors in that area and if they have a business card. You wouldn't believe how many contractors and other investors I've met just striking up conversation in the checkout aisle, but you want to make sure that you go to the pro section and not just to the normal homeowner section because then you're going to find people that you're looking for. So with a little bit of work, you can easily find someone who needs your help for any of the side hustles in this video. So if you want to find estimates for investors, you can probably find someone within a couple of days with just a little bit of work. So I'm going to give this five stars as a way to get started as you also don't need any money up front. In terms of how much you might get paid for this job, I would probably pay around $100 per phase. So for me, that would be $300 per project. And I've got got two to three projects happening per month. So that's $600 or $900 per month. And I'm going to give that five stars as how much you could make 
with the side hustle. And then finally, in terms of the time it would take, you would have to schedule with the contractor so that you could be here and let people in when their schedule's allowed. And it would probably take an hour or so to walk through with someone and make sure that they could get their measurements. And so I'll give this one three stars in terms of the effort and time it would take to do the job. The next side hustle is to be a handyman or an installer. So for a project like this, once it's done, there's going to be a handful of things that I still need to get finished before I can have a tenant move in here. And let's say that my general skilled contractors cost about $75 an hour. I'm not really going to want to pay them that much to do some of the simple things that need to get done before I can rent this property out. So that would be things like hanging blinds in the windows or hanging mirrors above a vanity. So having an installer or a handyman to come in at the very end of the project and knock those things out would be a super valuable service. So if you don't have the skills or the time to be a contractor full time, being a handyman slash installer part time could be the side hustle for you. I'm gonna give this one three stars in terms of easiness to get started because you do need to be a little bit handy and know how to use a drill, but a weekend on YouTube could take you pretty far in that. It also gets three stars because you probably are gonna need some basic tools up front so that you can go in and actually get the job done. In terms of pay, I'd probably pay someone about $150 a day to come in and knock out all of those punch list items. I'd need them for about four days a month, so that's $600 a month, which gets four stars in my book. And you could probably do this for just one or two weekends a month, which is not a huge time commitment for that amount of money, so that gets five stars. If we go out the back of this property, you'll see that there's actually another unit back here, which I'm gonna go inside and show you guys in a moment. But one of the questions I get asked most often is how do I find properties like this? So about 75% of them I find on market, meaning they're on Zillow or Redfin and I contact the real estate agent. And about 25% of them I find off market. And that just means there's no real estate agent involved. And instead I go directly to the homeowner to find the deal and negotiate with them. Or if I don't wanna do that work myself, I go to a wholesaler who's already done that work and can just pass me off the deal and I pay them an extra fee for that. Now, wholesalers can make great money and it's actually how I got my start in real estate before I started buying the properties for myself to keep, but I wouldn't call wholesaling a part-time side hustle, so I'm gonna leave it out of this video. But I can make a video about wholesaling or becoming a real estate agent or a property appraiser, or property inspector, different things like that. So if that interests you, comment your favorite emoji down below and if I get a thousand comments on this video, I'll make that happen. So as you can see, we have a bonus unit right here that used to be a detached garage, but that we're using for something extra special because I know I'm gonna get a lot of comments about it. Yes, this is a legal conversion. We pulled the permits and did everything we needed to do, but I wanna walk you guys in the front door so you can see what's going on in there. So we do have a concrete ramp right here that's drying underneath, so I'm not gonna step on that, but I wanna take you guys inside and show you because this is gonna be our Airbnb on this property. So obviously this unit is much more finished than the front house and that's because we're gonna use this as an Airbnb and go ahead and start renting it out while we finish up work up there in the main house. Which brings me to the next side hustle which is being an Airbnb cleaner slash restocker. Every single time a guest checks out, I'm gonna need someone to change the sheets and wash them, dry them, put them back on the bed, to restock things like toilet paper and paper towels, as well as just make sure that this area is ready for the next guest. Getting started with this would probably be pretty easy with a couple of Facebook and Craigslist ads and I don't know if this is allowed so Airbnb don't sue me but I imagine you could just go on Airbnb for your local area, find a couple of properties and message the host letting them know you're looking for a job as a cleaner. Someone try that out and let me know in the comment section if it works. I'll give this one four stars in terms of ease of getting started because you probably will need a bit of upfront money so you can buy some cleaning supplies and things of that nature but it's also possible that the host will provide those for you. My plan for this place is to pay about $60 per cleaning and restock. And depending on how long each guest stays and how occupied we are, that could be about 15 turns per month, which would be $900 per month for the cleaner. So the pay on this one gets five stars for me, 
but I am gonna need the cleaner to be available every day of the week from 11 a.m. to 3 p.m. because that's the time in between one guest checking out and the next guest getting here. So this one does get three stars in terms of time needed because that is a pretty strict schedule to make sure you're always available for. Let me know what you guys think of this Airbnb in the comments. The other thing you could do related to Airbnbs is to offer to be an Airbnb furnisher. Maybe you're really good with interior design or you could just contact a host and let them know that whatever furniture and things they buy for the Airbnb, you'll put it together and set everything up. I give this one two stars for ease of getting started because it might be kind of hard to find someone who wants that service. I also give it two stars for pay because I probably only pay around $200 for something like that and it would be less often that I would need someone to do that for me but I give it five stars in terms of time commitment because you could probably set up an entire space like this in less than a day, definitely less than a weekend. It could also be something that you tack on to your service as an Airbnb cleaner just to get a little bit extra cash in there. Now, I've also got some virtual side hustle ideas that you can do no matter where you live or where the investor you're working for lives. So we're gonna go see another property before we get into those, but be sure to stick around to the end of the video for all of the virtual side side hustle ideas. So the other day I was back here while my contractors were laying all of this new concrete and there was a guy that none of us recognized who walked back here and started asking people if they were in charge. It was kind of funny because he kept going to all of the guys first and the guys kept looking at me like, no, she's in charge. And he must have just been mishearing and didn't get the she's and thought he kept hearing he's because he kept going to other guys and being like, are you in charge? And they're like, no. She's in charge. And then he finally made his way over to me. But that said, he told me that he was a scrap guy. So if I had any scrap metal from old AC machines or water heaters or anything like that, he would take them off my hands for free. And this was a pretty good deal for me because that AC condenser over there is brand new, but we had just taken out the old one and I was gonna have to pay someone to haul it off. But now I had the scrap guy who would go ahead and haul it off for free. It was also a good deal for him because he got to take it for free and then go and sell the pieces of metal and make a profit on them. So if you have what you need, being a scrap guy could be a good real estate side hustle for you. I give it two stars to get started because you do need a truck that can haul around different pieces of large metal. And you also need to find a place to get the metal and also find someone to sell it to on the back end but I give it five stars in terms of how much money you could make because you're usually picking up the pieces for free. Whatever you sell them for on the back end is 100% profit. I'll give it four stars in terms of time commitment because it does take a bit of time to drive around, load stuff onto your truck, and then on the back side, you've got to take it to the person who's gonna buy it and probably help them unload it. But overall, being a scrap guy, not a bad side hustle. So in addition to all of the scrap metal that's created at a job like this, you also typically need a couple of these big old dumpsters throughout the project. And these cost $350 for a week. But sometimes you have a smaller amount of trash that's too big to fit in the trash can and go to the curb, but it wouldn't be worth me paying $350 to get a giant dumpster just for this. So you can do a side hustle of being a trash hauler. It's pretty easy to get started. I'll give it four stars as you will need a truck, but that's about it. You don't need any upfront money to haul off trash. In terms of how much it might pay, I pay my trash guy about a hundred bucks per haul and I need him, let's say four times a month. So 400 bucks a month gets us three stars. And in terms of the time commitment, this one gets five stars as he could probably have this loaded up and headed to the dump in less than half an hour. Dang, they got somebody. What did you do? Please, please, I don't have any time for any gossip now. Now, obviously, we've used the magic of editing to show you guys a new property. So let's jump back in the car, show you how we got here, and show you some side hustles that will be good if you're driving around town pretty often. <laughs> Now, if you've got a car and you don't mind driving around a ton, this next side hustle might be for you. You may have heard of it before, it's called bird dogging. And it's similar to wholesaling, but it's not the same thing. With wholesaling, you're putting a property under contract and shopping it around to multiple buyers. With bird dogging, you're pretty much only working for one investor. You're usually driving around neighborhoods like this and looking for distressed properties for them. And then you're using an app like Deal Machine or PropStream 
to log that property and then you give them the entire list of the properties that you found that day. So for me, it might be, I wanna find distressed properties that have a detached garage in the back that I can turn into an Airbnb. Another investor might be looking for any distressed properties that have overgrown lawns or stuffed mailboxes, that type of thing. Bird docking is pretty easy to do. So I give it four stars in terms of getting started because really the only thing you need is a car or somebody who will let you borrow their car. And pretty much every investor I know is looking for bird dogs because it's such a valuable thing for someone to do to spend time logging properties that you might one day end up buying. In terms of the pay though, typically bird dogs only get paid when a deal closes on a property that they found for an investor. So if I had a bird dog who sent me a list of properties they found, I'd probably pay them somewhere around $500 to $1,000 once I closed the deal that they were the ones who found. And so in terms of pay, I'm gonna give this one two stars because you never actually know when you're gonna get paid because you never know when an investor is gonna close a deal from your list. You're also depending on that investor to do the right thing and keep track of where they found the property and pay you when it closes. So can be a little iffy there. In terms of the time commitment, it does take a lot of time to drive for dollars and log dozens, if not hundreds of properties, which is why most investors don't wanna do it themselves and they're looking to get a bird dog who will do it for them. So time commitment wise, I'm gonna give it two stars, but I do have a bonus for you. If you're already driving for ride share or you're driving for meal delivery, bird dogging in addition to that could be a really good idea because you're already out driving and in between passengers or in between delivering meals, you can go ahead and log properties and make some extra money on top of what you're already making from the ride share job. Another side hustle option for you if you're driving around a lot is to become a mobile notary. So every state has a different requirement in terms of the amount of studying you have to do and the fees that you have to pay in order to get licensed. So this one, I'm gonna give one and a half stars in terms of ease to get started, although that does really depend on whatever state you're in. But in terms of the amount of money you can make, apparently mobile notaries charge about $150 per signing, which depending on how many signings you do, per week can be pretty can be pretty good money so I'll give it four stars there but three stars because in order to make a good amount of money you'll probably have to drive all around town and you need to do a significant amount of signings in order to make money but it could be an option now that we're back at our other property that takes me to the next side hustle on the list which is to be a bandit sign placer you can see a couple of bandit signs here in the background but you also usually see bandit signs when you go to stoplights and you see those we buy houses signs on the corners. Now these signs often get stolen by competitors or taken down by the city, which means that they need to be placed out pretty often and makes it a good side hustle for you. In terms of the ease of getting started, I'm gonna give this one five stars because you can go to any corner, look at the bandit signs, call the numbers on them and offer your services. In terms of pay, you could probably expect to get paid around $10 per sign and let's say someone needs 50 signs put out a month, so that's 500 bucks a month, also gets four stars. And we're gonna give it another four stars in terms of the time commitment, just because I know a lot of people who place bandit signs want them put out very early in the morning before people do their morning commute. So as long as you don't mind getting up early, it's a pretty quick job to get done. That said, let's go check out the inside of this property and talk about a few more side hustles. Now, if you've seen this video, you know that this house smells pretty bad, so I've got my mask on. Let's go inside and show you what's going on. I did see a, a rat earlier when I was here, so keep your eyes peeled. <laughs> All right, so at first glance, just looks like kind of a normal rundown house that needs a bunch of work, but we got something special over here. So if you can't tell already, I like houses that have extra space that I can convert into an extra unit. So what I'm standing in right now used to not exist. This space on the back used to be a detached garage and the previous owner converted that into an, a bonus room and converted this area into a little bit of a walkway so that they can get to it. And at first, when I first saw this property come on the market, it was a three bedroom, one bathroom, but it was 
much more than the 1200 square feet that all the other three bedroom, one bathrooms around here were. This one, instead of being 1200 square feet, was 1900 square feet. And I didn't understand where that extra square footage was coming from, but I thought I might be able to finagle that extra square footage into an extra unit. And that's what we've got going on here. But if I was an out of state investor and I wasn't able to come see this property for myself, I would need someone to do this next side hustle for me and that's come take pictures of properties. There are many investors who either can't go to a property or don't want to stop what they're doing and go to a property to take pictures. So this could be a very valuable side hustle. In terms of ease to get started, five stars for sure because we all pretty much have a smartphone that has a pretty decent camera. In terms of the payment, I'll give this one three stars. I would probably pay around 50 bucks for a set of pictures. And in terms of the time commitment, I'll give it four stars because it wouldn't take long to take a bunch of pictures, but you probably will need to be available to that investor because when they send you a property, they're usually gonna want you to go take the pictures right then and there so that they can make an offer quickly. Now, before we head back to the office and talk about the virtual side hustles, the last side hustle I could use on a property like this is someone to order materials for me. Now, for the most part, my contractors take care of the materials that they need. So the framer takes care of getting the wood, even though I pay for it. The drywallers take care of picking up or making sure the drywall is going to be delivered. But there are some things, especially towards the end of the project, that I'm in charge of getting here. And that would just be things like the light fixtures or the hardware in the cabinets or the sink and the shower fixtures. And so if I had someone where I could send them my spreadsheet of things that need to be ordered, they ordered them and brought them to the property, that would almost be like a project assistant role, which would be very useful for them learning the ropes of what needs to be done and would also save me some time. This one, I give five stars for getting started because you literally just have to put yourself out there and offer yourself to an investor and help them in whatever way that they need. In terms of payment, I'd probably pay someone around 300 bucks a project to be a project assistant. So three stars there. And I give it four stars on time commitment because if there's a lot of projects going on, you need more work, but you can also let the investor know what's the amount of time you have available and then work from there. That said, let's get out of this stinky house and head back to the office to talk about some side hustles you can do from anywhere in the world. First up, you can be a lead puller or a virtual assistant. So periodically in my business, it's time to pull leads, which basically means gather the contact information of people that I potentially think might be good prospects to sell me their property. So this might be something like, pulling a list of all of the vacant homes that are owned by someone who lives out of state and has owned the property for at least 10 years in a certain zip code. And so a job for a side hustler might be to pull leads like that, to wait on the phone with City Hall for five hours to pull a water shutoff list, which is a highly coveted list that investors like to go after, but it takes a lot of time and work to get it done. Another thing that lead pullers and virtual assistants do is to stack lists on top of each other. So if I have two list, then I want my virtual assistant to kind of scrape through that list and make sure that there's no duplicates. And a lot of times there's software that somebody can use to do this. So they don't have to like manually compare them, but it can be a tedious job that an investor wants to pass off, which makes it a good side hustle for someone looking to get into the game. Pretty much every investor I know is looking for a good VA. And so the ease of getting started here, I'm going to give it five stars. Anything you're going to need to know for that investor, they're pretty much going to teach you that when they hire you. In terms of the amount of money that could be made, every investor is going to pay a different amount and there's so many different tasks that you can be doing that it's hard to really pinpoint what you can make but there is a lot of competition from virtual assistants who live overseas and have a lower cost of living and so they can accept a lower rate and so i'm going to give being a va three stars on this one and finally the time commitment these are tasks that are usually time intensive and a bit tedious so it's also going to get three stars because you're probably going to spend a lot of hours doing those repetitive tasks as a va another side hustle you can give a try is to be a cold caller and so on one hand you have the va who pulled that list of leads but next up that list is usually sent to a cold caller who's literally gonna sit down and call hundreds of people and most of them are gonna say no they're not interested in selling until they find the one and then they usually set an appointment for the investor to go meet with that person or whatever next step the investor says now cold calling is not easy and I have posted videos on this channel of myself trying to cold call and I'm not very good at it I need to take some courses and and learn how to do it better so the ease of getting started, I'm gonna give this one three stars because you do need some skills and you need some thick skin, but a good cold caller is worth their weight in gold. And so I would say this might be one of the most lucrative side hustles on this list. So I'll give it five stars. 
But that said, cold calling does take hours and hours and hours because most of the people you're talking to are not going to be interested. And so you have to get through dozens and hundreds of leads per day. So that's gonna give it two stars on the time commitment. And back to the topic of the Airbnb that we visited earlier, another side hustle is to be a virtual Airbnb help desk. This is someone who would basically take over the guest experience for the investor who owns the Airbnb. And so you would message with guests in case they need any Anything, or they're wondering where's the laundry detergent or how do you turn on the TV that type of thing and then also if there's a problem with the Airbnb then the guest would send a message to you and you would call the appropriate handyman that the investor has already signified as if something goes wrong with the plumbing call this guy if something goes wrong with the electrical call this guy in terms of getting started I'm gonna give this one five stars for ease of getting started because you really don't need any money up front and you can learn the basics of managing an Airbnb after like a couple of days on YouTube the money to be made would probably be pretty nice to take somebody's Airbnb management off of their hands. I know for this service, if I had a couple of Airbnbs up and running, I would be willing to pay upwards of five, six, seven hundred dollars a month for somebody to completely take that off my hands. So I'm giving that five stars. But in terms of the time commitment, I'm giving it two stars because guests can reach out to you literally anytime they need something. And so you'll need to have alerts on that will wake you up in case a guest is asking for something or there's an emergency in the middle of the night. And so even though guests probably don't reach out that often, you will need to just make sure you're available in the case that somebody does. I hope you enjoyed getting to see some of my properties today. And if you wanna learn more about how I found the deals, how I finance them, and how things are going, definitely check out this video right here. I will link it in the description below. Let me know what you think of these side hustles. And if you want another video about things like wholesaling, becoming a real estate agent, or becoming a property manager, be sure to comment your favorite emoji down below. Until next time, don't forget to change the color of the like button. Thanks for watching.